Did you know that the word Amen is an ancient African term? Yes, you heard right. The term originates in Africa, and it was one of the many titles that ancient Africans used when referring to God. It originally meant the hidden or unseen creator. What's my evidence for this you ask? Well, take a look. In the ancient Kemetic, otherwise known as Egyptian, lexicon reference text titled, An Egyptian Hieroglyphic Dictionary, British Egyptologist and Semitic language expert, E. A. Wallace Budge, indicates that the term Amen is defined as, quote, the hidden God who is in heaven, end quote, or, quote, the hidden one, end quote, for short. Here you'll find the aforementioned passage in Budge's Hieroglyph Dictionary. Furthermore, Kemetic scholar Anthony Browder states that, quote, Amen refers to the hidden or unseen presence of God, end quote. The Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions took the term from the ancient Kemetic spiritual system, which predates them by thousands of years. When you ask most people, what does Amen mean, they respond with so be it, this was not its original meaning, and the biblical evidence corroborates this. For example, 1 Timothy 6 verse 16 states, quote, Who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. End quote. Furthermore, Revelations 3.14 says, quote, These are the words of the Amen. End quote. Again, Amen means the hidden creator. As one can see, the common translation of Amen to so be it doesn't work in the two above biblical passages. If the Abrahamic traditions took the term Amen from Kemet, it begs the question, when would this have happened in history? Well, let me explain. The Jewish or Hebrew tradition begins in Kemet, Egypt, after the Canaanites migrated there to flee famine in approximately 1700 BCE. According to historian, anthropologist, and linguist, Chai Kenta Dio, the people group described as Hebrews, Jews, or Israelites, quote, entered Egypt as 70 shepherds grouped in 12 patriarchal families, nomads, and left there 400 years later, 600,000 strong, after acquiring from it all the elements of its future tradition, including monotheism, end quote. Furthermore, there's a long expanse of time in which Kemet, or Egypt, expands its rulership to Palestine or Western Asia after a series of wars with Western Asiatic foreigners. Diop states, quote, In the 16th century BC, the 18th Egyptian dynasty, under Thutmose III in particular, had effectively conquered the whole Eastern Mediterranean, Crete, Cyprus, the Cyclades, etc., and all of Western Asia, Hutti, or the Hittite country, Mitanni, Amuru, Kadesh, Syria, the country of Akkad, and Babylonia. In total, according to Thutmose III's Hymn of Triumph, written in verse and engraved on the poetic stela at Karnak, facing Thebes in Upper Egypt, 110 foreign states were conquered and integrated to different degrees into the Egyptian Empire, end quote. The Hebrew tradition, followed by the Christian one, and later the Islamic one, therefore, in part, develops out of adapted African concepts, but on both African and Western Asiatic soil as a result of contact made with the ancient Kemites. When Jewish, Christian, or Muslim adherents call the ancient Kemites, or Egyptians, pagan, 
It's simply a rhetorical trick to cast a bad smell upon the very land that they adopted their theological concepts from, as there's an odd desire for the figureheads in different religions to give off the impression that they're completely original, although the historical facts prove that many of them are not. For example, the Roman invaders occupied Kemet between 30 BCE and the 7th century CE, and they attempted to cover up the fact that the later Roman Catholic Church plagiarized from the ancient Africans that they declared were pagan. Christianity finds its roots in ancient Kemet, otherwise known as Egypt. Hence why when referring to Christianity, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once wrote, quote, the Egyptian mysteries exerted considerable influence upon early Christianity, end quote. Similarly, St. Augustine once declared, the very thing which is now called the Christian religion existed among the ancients also, not was it wanting from the inception of the human race until the coming of Christ in the flesh, at which point the true religion, which was already in existence, began to be called Christian, end quote. Why don't most people know about this? Well, Browder explains that, quote, in 391 CE, the Christian Emperor Theodosius decreed that all that was ancient was pagan and therefore sinful, and the library of Alexandria was burned to the ground by a mob of Christian fanatics. As the knowledge of this ancient library faded from the memories of later generations, so, too, did the recollection of the Africans who had founded the earliest civilization in the ancient land that is now called Egypt, end quote. In summary, one of the ancient comedic titles for the divine creator was Amen, meaning the hidden or unseen God. So, when you're praying to God and you say Amen at the end of your prayers, know that you're invoking one of the many names of God which emerged out of Africa thousands of years before Judaism, Christianity, or Islam came on the scene. Well, that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, Please like, subscribe, or leave a comment. Also, consider showing your support by joining my Patreon page named Promoting Wholeness in a Partisan World. I'm Dr. Jermaine Thomas. Thanks for listening.